implementation consultant with Job Science and formerly a CTO for a number of years working on uh, Salesforce uh, products. And um, previous to that, I was actually a customer of uh, Job Science um, a number of years ago. Great. And uh, Jeremy, uh, what do you do at Job Science? Uh, thanks, Ted. So, hey guys, I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm one of the sales engineers uh, at Job Science based here in the UK. Um, I'm not Irish, but I am uh, a Kiwi from New Zealand. Uh, so, hopefully, the mix of uh, uh, accents today don't stuff you guys around too much. But, um, yeah, my job as a sales engineer is really to bridge the gap between uh, sales on the front line and our, our delivery teams in the professional services space. Great. Uh, so uh, why I've invited Gareth and Jeremy on today's call is because they've been very active and involved uh, in the delivery of hiring logistics to our first couple of customers um, for this product. And so what we're going to try and cover in today's webinar is what is hiring logistics? Um, how can we uh, make uh, your business more like Uber by giving you Uber-like tools? Um, how do you manage uh, your professional labor pools, which is a little different than how we manage day labor or per diem labor? Um, why are we doing this? Um, what's the impact on your business and how this can improve your utilization? So we are launching a new product at Job Science or a new product suite called Hiring Logistics. And Gareth, uh, you've worked with um, a Test Global and a series of other companies to point this. Can you kind of describe what Hiring Logistics is all about? I know you were at CPL for a long time and saw a lot of, uh, of interaction with workers. Why is this an exciting topic and, and what's, what's of interest to you about uh, what we're doing? Absolutely, yeah, Ted. Um, the, what's what's very interesting is is this hiring logistics brings in the area of um, scheduling into the recruitment process. So we've got um, in job science the full suite to allow us to uh, recruit to add job orders to recruit people to place them in roles. But with the uh, addition of this product, it allows us to schedule those staff and confirm those staff are on site and check availability and 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 basically manage um, really really quickly. And the whole uh, area of um, contingency labor. So really what the hiring logistics suite is all about is giving you a single system to manage your back office, your consultants, your customers, your contractors, and your sales. And uh, you know, as you've been implementing this, what are the type of efficiencies uh, that you're seeing uh, with uh, different customers deploying the product? Well, firstly, it's it's speed. Um, so in any of uh, the companies that are operating in this field, they, it need, they need to be quick. They'll get a call from a customer looking for contingency staff. They want those staff as quickly as possible. If they can't get staff to that customer, that customer is going to ring the next uh, um, agency. So it's about getting uh, the speed um, of having the availability, having that person, the, the available people on the screen, and being able to quickly move them into those placements and get them out to site um, faster than your competitors. And the amount of time it usually takes to build a roster or a schedule of, of workers, you know, what would you say, how much time is that generally taking up uh, for, for one of our customers? Um, well, some of our customers uh, could be taking hours to, to put together getting a, a new uh, member of staff in and put, onboarding them, having them their availability and, and having them ready to go to, 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 go to a site uh, um, when the customer calls. Uh, using our, our products and our scheduling tool and our forms product allows us to gather as much information as possible, get those people ready much quicker. So it's bringing the time down to a matter of you know minutes as opposed to hours to get people ready um, and available to go to site. And then when the customer calls, it's literally a matter of drag and drop to get them out and, and working. Now, uh, Jeremy, uh, I know you're going to show us this in a second, but when doing the scheduling, how do we use information like compliance rules to help drive the schedule? Because I know we put, we're putting out the poll question right now of would people use AI to help them build and schedule labor? And a lot of people are saying no, they wouldn't. What's the benefit of, of using the, these data tools? And maybe in a second we'll go in and take a look at it. But Jeremy, can you speak to that and, and why this is such a pickup for both direct hire, like if let's say you're a hospital and you're trying to staff your nurses or cl clinical workers, or if you're in the contract labor business and you're trying to schedule people, why why is the system able to do it so much faster than uh, humans? That's a great question. I think um, you know, with uh, job science, even in the front office and right through the back office, um, we're starting to collect a lot of information around you know the details of the candidates, how they're interacting with different jobs, how they're performing um, through the application process, and all of this can be. Um, funneled into uh, an algorithm or a, some AI to determine 
whether or not they're a good fit for a job, whether they match particular jobs, but also in this case, whether they are um, eligible to work on a particular shift or, or project that you've got. So what we'll show you a bit later on is how in the back you can sort of collect information around, say, compliance, expiry dates of um, right to work and passports and all feed that into um, the back end system to tell you whether or not someone's a good fit for a job or not. Great. Well, why don't we go in and take a look at the beginning of hiring logistics and what we're going to talk about today is uh, how you would use hiring logistics for your uh, day labor, how you would use hiring logistics for your professional labor, um, how you'd use uh, hiring logistics if you had consultants, um, if you were, you know, lots of different use cases. And, um, and Jeremy, I think you prepared a little demonstration of that, so let's, uh, let's go in and take a look at what we've got here. So uh, what are we looking at, Jeremy? Yeah, so we're going to break this down into three parts, scheduling, monitoring, and time capture. But what you're seeing on screen, guys, is um, the job science scheduler. Um, so what we've got is we've got a number of sites of WeWork um, who offer up office spaces. Uh, and you can see the green indicate shifts that are being published out for workers, and the red ones indicate shifts that uh, are not uh, not fulfilled yet. So I've just clicked Find Replacement on that particular shift, and you can see now I've got some indications of whether people are a good fit or not. So I'm green. I've got um, I've worked on similar shifts before, uh, and I've got the right compliance. But Gareth, however, isn't. Uh, and then if we go further down, you've got some options which are red. So that's really starting to use the information that we're gathering behind and, and aligning to a score matrix uh, to be able to help you identify a good replacement. Um, on top of that, we also offer auto assign, which allows you to assign out um, shifts based on the suitability of candidates or workers, uh, and that's done automatically. On top of that, we also do what we call broadcast, uh, which I'll show you guys a bit later on, and broadcast allows you to broadcast shifts out to uh, candidates available there. They can get those notifications on their mobile phone. Uh, but what we're quickly showing you up here is the ability to create shifts very quickly. Um, job science will obviously automate a lot of this so that your shifts will be generated off the placement record. But on top of that, it's just like working with a, a, a sort of a spreadsheet where you can copy and paste shifts and move them around and align them up. Now, from a monitoring perspective, um, you know, once you've got these workers uh, to be allocated to these shifts, then you can start monitoring them as to where they are in terms of working on those shifts. So you can see here, um, we've got a few yellows. Yellow means that they're risky, so they may have not confirmed that they're about to show up for a shift. Uh, when they're showing up on site, they'll be green, and so you'll be able to see there uh, when they arrive. So what I've just popped up on screen is what we call the mobile app. And this is a very simple app which allows you to confirm, start, and end shifts. And all of that information is going back into job science to be collected as timesheets. So it's a different offering to our normal community portal timesheet. You're able to use your mobile phone now to automatically generate your time cards and get that into the system. And Jeremy, the real benefit here is that workers can now have a mobile device to be able to manage their time. Um, and this can work for both professional um, contracting labor and also for direct hire. What's a use case you could see for, for example, I know that a third of our audience is direct hire, for a direct hire business like a hospital uh, to use this? I know we had a call the other day with a hospital. How would they use this type of tool? Yeah, so the great great option around this was, was the fine replacements, which we showed you before. So as, if you take nurses, for example, and they're rostered on shifts, um, you know, if, if someone isn't able to come in, you're very quickly able to find out who's available to cover that shift um, and who can be rostered on in, with, within sort of minutes, effectively. So we're not saying that it's going to take away, um, you know, the consultant's job and the fact that they still need to sometimes call up a, a worker or a nurse, but it definitely helps you uh, automate a lot of those processes in terms of finding replacements. And Gareth, I know you just deployed this in a large uh, institution that does um, uh, substitute teachers. How are they using this and how, by giving a mobile device like the one Jeremy showed uh, on the screen, how is that changing their business and does that make them more like an Uber type of uh, system for the worker? Kind of speak to us a little about that. Well, it allows what it's allowing the the, the people to do is is basically you can you can log your availability on the app, so you can decide when you want to work. In the same way with Uber, you're deciding when you want to work. That's allowing the uh, agents who are who are reviewing the 
uh, open shifts and, and finding replacements to find you very quickly. That's then pushing to the app and you can then t accept that job straight away on the app as well. So you're basically um, able to control everything without having to make the phone calls and um, without having to email anyone. It's all there on your uh, smartphone at the time. When you get to site, you're able to clock in to, to let the, the uh, agent know that you're now on site. So it's basically managing all that for you um, right from your mobile phone. And so the benefit here is that instead of having to what make phone calls to dozens of people to see if they'll take a shift, everyone's instantly communicated to and they can respond in seconds? Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got the full capability of, of, of controlling everything from your app and not having to, to make those phone calls if you don't need to. Got it. Now, uh, I guess one question I'd have is um, in the case of certain businesses like transportation and healthcare and nuclear power plants, where they have compliance rules, how does that factor in, or is the system just sort of randomly looking at people and, and SMSing anyone on your list? How, do, how does that work, Jeremy? So the compliance rules are such as things like certification, uh, you've got things like have they worked on shifts before, um, you know, have they got the right um, uh, you know, um, onboarding that has been done as well. All of that is being captured in the background. And we've, uh, you're able to assign weightings to each of those, which then, uh, which then tells you whether or not, um, you know, how much of a fit they are for particular roles. I think the great thing as well is we also look at fatigue, um, and around what we mean around that is that if a worker has worked, say, more than 40 hours per week, or has uh, worked more than three days in a row, you're able to set up rules that align to your business around what dictates um, a suitable worker um, to be allocated to shifts. So if you combine all those things together um, and you allocate the weightings on what's most, uh, most important and what's critical, then you're really starting to um, assess and identify the best uh, fits for the, the shifts that you've got coming up. But also on top of that, all of this information helps you decide um, supply and demand. So you know, if you're, if you're uh, regularly seeing workers that are you know, working over their, uh, their maximum work out, working hours of 40 hours per week, you're able to forecast that and then be able to see when you need to go and hire more workers. Got it. Now, in terms of utilization, which is a really important topic for any business, uh, whether they be a contract labor business or direct hire, what's the impact on making sure you're utilizing your available labor, uh, Gareth? I know this is uh, probably a big factor that you saw at CPL and some of the uh, places you work, but how does this impact utilization? Uh, basically, Ted, because you've got all the information in the one system, it's allowing you to, uh, as Jeremy said, it's monitoring everything. So you you have access to all the data to pull whatever reports you need to determine um, utilization and make sure that you're um, using your, your, your resources um, sufficiently. Got it. And that's ultimately going to drive the margins of your business or the cost of the labor that you're procuring. So what we're really doing is we're basically giving companies the ability to be their own Upwork or Fiverr or Uber or, or Lyft almost of, uh, of labor for any type of labor, not just people who drive you around town. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And what we're going to do is now we're going to move into the second type of labor that we work with, which isn't the day labor, but which is more of the scheduled labor uh, for professional and for consulting, um, to show that to everybody and give them a sense of what else is in hiring logistics. Because I think one of the things that's very different about what we're doing is the focus on the fact that um, the tool has different types of time collection for different types of business lines. And what we know is that all your business lines aren't the same, and therefore uh, we need to give you different tool sets uh, for the different types of things that you're doing. So, uh, Jeremy, why don't we pop into that and take a look at it, but, but also for everyone who knows job science, who's like, wait, job science is you know, about recruiting and finding the best talent. What we've decided in the gig economy is that you first need to figure out how to work with who you've got. Um, and we've tied it together with a vendor management system. So when you want to take uh, orders from vendor management systems to fulfill, you have a direct tie-in to then scheduling people. If you can't find them uh, or you can't book them, then you need to go use our recruiting tools to go find them. And so that's now the cycle and the process. Um, and uh, so, Jeremy, let's take a look at the time um, and tell us uh, what we're, we're looking at now. Sure. So this is um, when we're on the back office side for uh, for the okay. top clients. So, um, yeah, so what you guys can see here is this is the placement record. Um, you can see that uh, all the information here is collected 
and really it's showing uh, commissions, it's showing coming up targets, profits, and invoicing. All of that information is consolidated on the placement record, and we've got uh, information being generated off that, like timesheets um, and so forth. Um, so now what we're also going to do is move into the time, uh, the job science communities. And sorry about I've used an old uh, demo environment here, but effectively, um, what the communities allows you to do is it provides self-service to the candidates or workers in order for them to view their timesheets and enter timesheets uh, expenses um, and so forth. So this, this allows us. Really, this is really designed for the the long-term contract labor, as opposed to someone working on a day shift who just needs to get to their assignment and report that they showed up. Is that is that correct, Jeremy? Yeah, that's correct, Ted. Um, so yeah, all the information is captured in this uh, in this uh, community here. It's self-service, as I said, so you know it sort of takes the onus off your consultants um, and really allows the uh, workers to be able to view, or consultants, sorry, or, or contractors to view all the information um, from that place. And so the effect of this really is that if your business isn't just one uh, mono type of business, but actually has different business units, you don't actually want to ask folks on long-term contracts to use their mobile phone to clock in and clock out. Um, and so instead, you're giving them more of a portal-like experience where they can respond. They may also put in things like expenses, um, receipts, notes, comments. They might bill their time to different projects. And so what we're doing here in our back office is really taking all that data, pulling it together, and allowing you what to generate invoices and commission reports for everyone who's involved. If you're in the direct hire experience, this probably is not as important to you, but if you ever wanted to bonus recruiters, on making sure that if they place someone or someone's doing work because of the work they've allocated, you could certainly do that. But it's definitely a use case that's really fit for folks who are in the uh, professional labor business. Now, um, Gareth, in the implementations you've done, do you envision that this is something where you'd have these uh, the long-term and the, the short-term labor systems sitting side by side? Kind of speak to that for a second. Absolutely, uh, Ted. Uh, from uh, back when I did work with CPL recruitment, we would have had um, all those use cases together in the in, in, in side by side. So you will have situations where you're you're dealing with uh, contingency day labour. Um, you will have situations you're dealing with a little bit more long-term managed service type environments where you are responsible for the scheduling to make sure there's staff on site. So our scheduling tool now allows you to do that from the same system. This allows you to manage more your contractors or your more longer term temps that you're literally just managing their timesheets um, and, and running the pay and bill for your customers. Um, so it's allowing you to do the same thing again in the same system, right up to you know allowing you with the back office tool to maybe run uh, invoicing and commissions from permanent placements. Uh, the, the, the big win for you in that is that now you've got one system with all your, con your, your um, candidates where you're able to use them for different functions depending on uh, what particular um, uh, customer you're working with. Yeah, and so again, what we're really trying to do in the hiring logistics suite is give people different options depending on how your business works. Because one thing we know is that if you feel like you're not doing day labor and you're doing long-term labor, you want to have an experience for that type of worker that it really meets their requirements. Um, again, what that then ties into is the concept of a back office. Um, and what back office is really allowing you to do is to generate a lot of reporting um, and data to feed your what your uh, payroll system, feed your um, uh, uh, timesheet system, feed your GL. What are some of the systems that we've had to integrate uh, these tools with, uh, Gareth? So, sorry, Ted, yeah, um, pay and bill engines and, uh, you know, into your um, your invoicing uh, systems, your general ledger systems. So we have um, customers using everything from Sun Microsystems to um, to standalone uh, payroll engines um, such as uh, Sage. So. So basically, this is allowing us to do all the work within the one system without having to have that that in between um, program that's going to, to to turn the numbers and then pass out your uh, your pay and your bill. Uh, this is all happening within the one system and allowing it to do that for you. So, if you were to say that uh, you've seen sort of an impact from this type of program, um, what is the type of feedback that you're actually getting from customers? In fact, why don't I take a moment just to um, to share some of the feedback that we've gotten on this?
Well, things like maybe adding a candidate, um, that used to take maybe 20 minutes per person and now it's just instant when they've applied to a job, it just creates it itself. As an example, on a payroll day is normally taking consultants the full day, whereas we've actually been doing it in two hours. You know, we've been calculating the amount of time each task takes uh, and actually in comparison to Frost, we are saving a hell of a lot of time, uh, which has enabled us to actually focus more on whether, you know, selling uh, or getting candidates in. Uh, it gives candidates apps, it has candidate portals, client portals, and it moves us into the sort of technology that, that the rest of the world is already used to. It, it's the Facebook age, if you like, for recruitment. It's so easy to use. Um, I love that everything is in one place, rather than sort of having frost in a million spreadsheets. So one of the processes that we have um, every day is they have to check the maps, which is the geo maps, so they're actually getting visibility of where their candidates are. Um, and one of the consultants actually had a client querying where their person was thinking they weren't on site. She logged straight into the app, um, into the map, sorry, and within two minutes she knew exactly where the person was and on site. It's fantastic. So, so for candidates, the main benefits are ease of use and flexibility. So just to give you one example, Instead of candidates have to physically ring in with their availability, we can now give them an app and they record their, their availability in real time. So I found sort of when the phone rings now, instead of just passing the call on to your colleague, you, you're able to just see what they can see and, and help the person at the end of the phone rather than, than pass it on. And, uh, probably the most positive thing is the, the empowerment it gives um, our candidates and our workforce because it's a uh, a whole different type of relationship when you can manage your own time, literally, which is what we want, which is a huge benefit in you. So uh, hopefully uh, you all were able to hear uh, the audio from, the, from that video. If you're not, there's a hyperlink to the video that uh, will be sent out to everyone. But basically the feedback that we're getting from folks using the system is that they're saving a lot of time. Um, and that time uh, is helping them increase the amount of time they have to actually spend with candidates, generate new business, um, and then ultimately candidates like being empowered to do their own job. So on that note, um, we've kind of given you a high-level overview of the hiring logistics suite. What I'd like to do is open it up to questions, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and see what questions that we uh, currently have. If you don't know how to ask questions, um, you can go ahead and in the right-hand column, you can post questions that you have um, about hiring logistics, but I, I'm going to answer a couple that have come up, and I think I'll pose them to uh, Gareth and Jeremy. So Gareth, how difficult is it to actually set this up? That's the first question. Uh, pretty simple to set up, set up Ted. Um, you know, you you basically need to set up your uh, your rules and your sites where you're going to have your workers working, and your contracts and your pay, bill and pay rates. Once you've got all that set up, it's literally just a matter of um, getting your candidates into the system. So using our uh, job orders to source candidates and and get them in and compliant, um, adding your compliance to them, whatever uh, conditions you need to add, and they're ready to go. And what are the number, the next question I have is how many contractors can I run in the system? So is Very there good question. Um, Jeremy, do you know the, uh, there is an optimal uh, number of uh, ca uh, candidates to workers, which eludes me at the moment. Um, I may need to come back on that um, question. I, uh, I think it was around, the, sorry, I don't want to say I, I can't ask that just yet. How many, how many is your client that you just deployed, about how many contractors are they working with? 30, sorry. It's, it's 30 uh, uh, workers to a particular um, consultant is the, uh, is the optimal that we recommend. Got it. But in terms of the total number of contractors that the system can run, uh, is there a limit to that? Or if you had two or 3,000 contractors, could you handle that in the system? Absolutely. Okay. Where um, we have into the thousands and hundreds of thousands in, in some cases um, in some of the places where we've uh, implemented. The next question, and maybe I'll hit this up with Jeremy, is how hard is it to get the mobile app working and to get folks to use the mobile app? Because it sounds like someone's convinced that workers won't actually use their own devices. Jeremy, uh, do you want to take that one? 
Yeah, sure. So the mobile app is uh, available for download on the um, iPhone App Store and on the uh, Google Play Store. So, and then it's just a matter of um, setting them up with the username and password. Um, so it's really been designed um, to be very simple for them. So obviously, from a worker perspective, we want them to be um, to, for it to be seamless for them to start a shift and to end a shift. Um, then they can also uh, need to be able to view their shifts so they can sort of accept or reject shifts that have been proposed out to them. Um, but also it gives them an ability once you've processed through the time and invoices uh, for them to see their, their potential pay as well. Um, so it really gives them a lot of, um, I guess, uh, need for them to, to use it. Um, and that certainly helps with adoption. And, and as I said, in terms of setting it up, it's very straightforward as you would normally. You'd download it from the uh, Apple or, or Google Store. Now, Jeremy, a question that has come up is that they, someone's like, hey, I know job science is a recruiting suite. Where's the recruiting? So how does recruiting fit into this whole thing, Gareth? Uh, where, where does job science, the new part of job science, which is the, the scheduling and the time sheet collecting, does that start before the recruiting? And then if you can't find someone, the recruiting starts? How, how does it all fit together? I think there's a little confusion about how this fits into what job science does. So, uh, Gareth, you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it really depends on the use case. So we have customers where uh, they're using our job science um, recruiting process to basically source candidates um, and bring them through a compliance process to make sure that they're uh, ready to work. So they're basically uh, using our system, putting jobs in, uh, advertising those jobs, bringing applicants through uh, our AMS tool, the same as we would um, on a permanent or our contract job and then at the point that we have them ready to roll they will be then used uh, basically in put into holding areas to be able to add them to the scheduler. We also have customers who will manage more long-term temporary people on the scheduler so they will go through the standards uh, job function go, coming in as applicants, going through sending out the CV, going through interview, going into placement and at the point the placement's created then that data gets seamlessly pushed into our scheduling tool to allow us to manage them within the scheduler. So the two systems work hand in hand um, depending on what use case you're working on. Got it. Now um, I know we have different parts of our audience today. So we have some people who are in direct hire, some people who are in consulting, some people who are in contract labor. Um, if I'm a consulting firm and I simply want to collect the hours that my consultants are spending on different projects, can I use the job science back office to do that, or is that you know your your professional services, Gareth? If you my experiences, is this something I could use to log my hours? Absolutely, you can utilize our back office tool to manage the uh, the uh, recording of time and expenses and other functionality and um, through the portal that uh, Jeremy demonstrated. And for the product that does the scheduling, um, Jeremy, uh, who is the ideal user? Who who do you think's had the most success? Um, from what you understand with this product and, and what type of customers are using it. So Jeremy, I'll let you take that one and we will take one more question and then we'll, we'll end. Perfect. Yeah, so a lot of the customers that we've been seeing that have been interested are, are the ones that are doing a lot of sort of high volume temp type work, um, office cleaners, uh, you know, warehouse workers, um, event, event and the security staff as an example. Um, you know, one of the clients that um, Gary can probably talk to a bit more if needed is, um, you know, after two weeks uh, of working with the scheduler and the overall sort of job science package, they were finding that the consultants were saving um, uh, over six hours per week on, on average. Um, so it's really, you know, moving, a lot of times it's moving, uh, you know, their the, the consultants away from using a spreadsheet or doing too many clicks to moving into something like the scheduler where they can visualize what's happening, but also very quickly, um, you know, attend to people not being able to show up or to plan ahead and, and get all their shifts um, out there scheduled and also sent over to the uh, to the workers for them to accept in advance. So it's a lot about planning ahead, but also dealing with uh, what's happening uh, sort of day to day. And Gareth, you've been on the ground with customers using this. Where are you seeing um, the smiles? Uh, de definitely, as as Jeremy described, they're around the efficiencies of time. I mean, um, back when w when we were managing in CPL in a lot of cases, and I'm sure other customers have this. If you've got multiple systems, you have all sorts of uh, issues with trying to get data between them, or you know, reverting to spreadsheets. So it can be very you know, time consuming to try and manage all that. Being able to have all the information in one place so that you can manage your 
uh, day labourer, you can manage your um, contracts, you can manage your permanent recruitment from one single place and get the full view of the candidate from there, the full view of the customer from there is, is, is massive time saving and it's a massive benefit to, to any business. Great. Well, I want to thank everyone for participating. I'll take the last question, which is how do I get it? Um, it's simple. Just reach out to us at Job Science, either to your uh, customer support team through live chat if you're an existing customer. If you're a, a new prospect, uh, give us a ring or fill on a lead form on our website. Um, we'll get in touch with you. And I want to thank everyone for participating in today's webinar. We'll be posting a video of the webinar and uh, putting it in distribution. Gareth and Jeremy, thank you so much for your time. And everyone have a great day.